barely translates to the handlebars at all. Well, hey everyone. Today is an exciting day because my Precision Racing Steering Stabilizer has finally arrived and they went above and beyond to work with me so that I could share everything with you guys. About two months ago, I ended up crashing my fat bike and separated my shoulder. Unfortunately, I'm still kind of injury prone and I wanted to look into a product that would hopefully help assist my shoulder as it's recovering and help prevent any future potential injuries. And that's what led me to the steering stabilizers. We've all experienced a hard impact to one of our front tires while riding. It's only a matter of time until one of those impacts could be hard enough to potentially rip the handlebars from your hands. If an impact is hard enough, you could break a wrist or even get tossed from your machine. We're only so strong and a product like a steering stabilizer is going to help you ride more relaxed and with confidence. When I started researching stabilizers, there was a few different varieties and price ranges. The more affordable stick style dampers have a reputation for wearing out considerably faster and they don't have nearly the adjustability that the Precision offers. Plus this new Elite model is supposed to maintain performance in a wider temperature range from hot to cold and that helps keep the internal pressures low and prevent fade. They have an excellent track record and tons of positive reviews online. They can last up to five years and if they start to show some age and you can send it in and they'll fully rebuild it and send it right back to you. So the upfront cost might seem kind of high but when you think about its longevity, the positive reviews and the build quality, it's actually a pretty sweet deal and that's why I'm excited about this product and I cannot wait to open this box. So let's check it out. So I may have taken a sneak peek in here already and I was super happy to see that they sent me this bar pad. I haven't seen anything below this but they sent me this bar pad. So it looks like we've got an instruction kit and it looks like this thing's wrapped together pretty good. Man, these are heavy duty stickers. These are really nice actually. Obviously not going to go into crazy detail here, but it looks to be pretty in depth. It also has recommended adjustments for different types of terrain. So like you can see here, MX track, average roughness, TT track, cross country, desert racing, trail riding, dunes. Everything's anodized and it looks really nice. That's going to attach to the steering stem and then you got your connecting arm in between and the actual reservoir and then the mount for the frame here. When you're putting it on, the main thing is just make sure you have 90 degree angles. You know, make sure everything is nice and flush and that these little gaps and everything are nice and level. And I guess just get it in there to begin with. We'll definitely get the clamps for the damper itself on the machine first. So we got the first clamp snug. Now we're gonna put the back clamp on here too. A little bit of play. Seems like it fits really nice. It does, it fits in there like super good. If anything, it looks like it's supposed to be there. So we'll get these torqued down and then we'll get the steering stem clamp on. But you do have a little bit of play here. I don't know if you can see it going yep. up and down. Yep. So I mean, you've got that wiggle room. It wants you to have it right in the middle. There it goes. There we are. Well, I'd say the install is pretty straightforward. The directions were very clear. Everything lined right up the way it was supposed to. And I'm not Mr. Wrencher by any means, but if I can put it on there, then I think you can definitely put it on there. So I'm pretty excited about this. So I'm going to show you guys where to put the stabilizer for your first ride. And they recommend you go with a preset setting. You have two points of adjustment here. You have your sides and you have your center. There's two wheels here that you spin. They have eight notches on them. You spin them clockwise or to the right in order to close them, and you spin them counterclockwise or to the left in order to open them or harden or soften those points of damping. So they recommend you close them out and then count back to the preset settings of your desire. So I'm gonna spin them to the right, and now we're closed out at zero. I'm supposed to put the sides at 12 and the center at 10. So I'm going to take my wheel here with its eight notches on it. So I'm going to spin it one half for four, another half for eight, and another half for 12. Now I'm going to take the front and I'm going to spin that half a turn for four. I'm going to spin another half a turn for eight. And I'm going to put it a quarter turn for 10. We'll take it out. I'll give you a couple of visual examples of how well this product works and we'll go from there. So let's load up. So we're out at my parents' place and I'm gonna 
do a couple examples of how well the stabilizer works down in the woods here. I'll just set up some logs staggered and we'll bang off them with in individual tires in the front. And you'll see how little kick there is to the bars. It's, it's very impressive. If anything, my steering feels kind of loose. I've already gotten used to that preset setting, that 10 and 12. And I just know, you know, all the way up to the pro riders, they just keep working their way down into the low single digits. So this is where I figured I would set up my little test here and we'll give you guys kind of some examples. Hopefully you can see it pretty good with the elements. So I figured I'll just take some logs and we'll kind of stagger them so it's like a right, left, right. And instead of having that standard reaction with the handlebars, they stay pretty much straight the whole time. It's, it's pretty exceptional how well it works. Now I just got to find some wood to put down. All right, I ran over them a couple times. I moved them a little bit so I could get going a little faster. Hopefully I can get a slow motion shot showing, you know, how little movement I get in the bars going over each one of these. All right, I'm in second gear coming up on this. All right, so I took the other two logs out of the way and now we'll just hit this one, maybe going a little bit faster. All right, we're gonna hit the single log at super slow motion on the handlebars. I kind of reinforced the backside of it because it keeps moving on me. So we'll see how this looks. Man, it barely translates to the handlebars at all. All right, I thought I'd kind of give you a close up of how big that log is I'm hitting. I think I was like halfway through second gear. I mean, not crazy fast, but if you were to hit that without a damper and to maybe not be bracing for it, you could totally lose the bars and the impact like that. The first time I rode with it, I was kind of losing my mind. I thought it was really cool. It was uh, definitely an odd sensation. The way everything translates through the bars is kind of dependent on how you set the damper up. If you go with their preset settings in normal temperatures, it's pretty easy to move the machine around. Like you don't, you don't have a lot of resistance in the handlebars. I know if you crank up the damper a little bit and you make it a little bit harder, it's definitely going to be a little bit more work to turn the machine, but everything will be more fluent. I mean, it seems like the stiffer the settings are, the smoother it gets. You just don't want to set yourself up in the circumstances where it could be more aggressive than you can handle. Just using it the little bit that I have, it's already been like, wow. I mean, I, I have moments every single ride where I'm just kind of like, man, this thing is awesome. So I know there's other products on the market, but you spend the extra money, you get the wide temperature ranges, you get all the adjustability, and you get the longevity of a really well-made, industry-leading, patented product. And I don't think I would want to test any other ones, and I don't think I'm going to be too excited to ride a quad without one. But it will be interesting to do that eventually and to just really see how the experience changes. So I really hope you guys liked today's video. It was fun to get out and kind of play in the snow for the first time. And hopefully we get to do some more riding soon. So you guys have a good one and we'll catch you later.